welcome to our flood model. This is going to demonstrate the differences between different surfaces that we put in, so like an urbanized surface versus a natural surface. And then we'll also look at a couple mitigation techniques uh, used to control flooding uh, and judge kind of their effectiveness there. Um, the first thing that's very important, there's two things that's very important to hold uh, constant when you're trying to compare flooding scenarios, right? So if we're trying to compare the difference between these different types of surfaces, land surfaces, uh, during the same flooding event, a couple things we need to do, we need to hold uh, the volume and the rate constant, right? So what I have for volume here is I have a pitcher of water filled to 2,800 milliliters, right? And for every experiment, we'll be doing that. And then set up on the top here, I have this cool little uh, grid, right? This is my rainmaker, if you will. Uh, and the little holes in here will help us to, uh, to control the rate at which the water enters the system. So what we have is a constant volume and rate, right? And that will give us uh, a good way to analyze the differences between some of these different uh, 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 um, land surfaces. So the first one we have here, these are just some sponges. This is going to represent either our natural land surface, if you will, or, uh, or, or a swamp or, or a wetlands kind of scenario, right? So let's take a look here. We'll do kind of a side profile if I can. Now maybe I'll just hold it up here and we can watch the water come through. So a um, couple things to notice here. Let's go ahead and put the water in, right? Uh, I will be uh, providing you with the, the graphs of this uh, data to, for you to, uh, to uh, analyze and play with, right? So here, first we're going to put the water in, constant volume, constant rate, right? And let's see what happens. So here we go, pouring this water in. As we notice, this natural land surface has quite the ability at the beginning to absorb excess surface water, right? So infiltration capacity. And then as we notice, as it infiltration capacity fills up, right? We do have a little bit of flooding going on down here in our town, right? On that lower level, this is our, our modern floodplain. These are terraces, right? From former elevations of this river, a little oxbow lake over here. But we can see that, you know, as uh, with, this, with this extra, uh, uh, ability to absorb some water, right, that infiltration capacity, that keeps some of this water down a little bit. Now, I also want to do this. I'm going to pause this video here. Now, folks, what I want to do is uh, the same scenario. So we have the wetlands or natural grass area uphill, but this time, the set's completely saturated, it's completely full. So it's springtime, we've had lots of snow melt off and run off, right? We've got lots of rain coming in. The ground is full, it can absorb no more. It has no infiltration capacity. So let's check it out again, same 2800 milliliters through the same filter, should give us the same rain event. But let's check out the difference now that the ground is full, right? We see almost immediate difference in flooding, right? much higher flood volumes, right? A lot of runoff, right? Our poor houses are floating now. Oh, bye-bye village, right? So this is the scenario that we get when uh, we have already full ground water, right? Our full ground, right? Our soil and our ground is soaked, it's saturated, right? This is what's occurring here. So before they go down my little tube and destroy it. All right. Alrighty, folks, for this scenario, we have replaced our natural area, our wetlands, right, our, our grassed area. We've paved over it with a parking lot here. So this is, you know, downtown Grand, uh, Grand Rapids or Grand Valley State University, you know, after they built all the parking lots and everything, right? So as you can imagine, right, cement parking lots, almost zero infiltration capacity, right? So what we'll see is all of this that used to be soaking into the ground in this area will now become surface runoff. So let's watch uh, this instance and how, again, using the same volume of water, 2,800 milliliters, same rainmaker, right? So we're producing the same rain event, right? Let's watch how this 
almost immediately how much faster this goes into the system and how much more water enters the system. Now that we've paved over paradise, right? Oh no! It's water! Whoa, look at this! Right? All the way up to the second one here, right? Quite a bit more water in the system. Absolutely, right? So all of that excess surface runoff just went straight down immediately into the system, right? And now we have, you know, oops, you know, here you've uh, built your house in the modern floodplain, right? right? So we're seeing, you know, with obviously the same rain event, much higher and more pronounced flooding just by replacing and, and, and reducing that infiltration capacity at the beginning. Okay, folks, now that we looked at those different headwater scenarios, you know, parking lot versus natural grass area, um, let's look at a couple different mitigation techniques, right? Mitigation techniques, again, being uh, ways we can buffer against some of the effects, right? So some of the effects of this excess flooding from all this extra surface runoff that we have, right? This first uh, mitigation technique we're gonna be doing is using an artificial levee. So here I have built an artificial levee. Okay, fine, I'm not an engineer, but I have tried to protect my little houses down here, right? So this is the scenario we have in New Orleans, right? With Hurricane Katrina, right? And the levee busted, right? So let's look, take a quick look at what we've done here, right? So what we've done is we've just really extended and heightened those channel walls, right? So hopefully that will continue to keep this excess water instead of going and flooding over the floodplain, it'll get that excess water uh, to be funneled down uh, through our, through our uh, to the lower streams, right? Or farther downstream. We'll see if this works, right? We'll see if I did a good enough job and breach, and if my levee gets breached or not. If it gets breached, here's the issue, right? These houses, right, now live in between a levee and the valley wall they are essentially in the back swamp, right? So if you build your house next to a levee, you're essentially building your house in the back swamp, an area that does not drain. And if it does get topped, it won't allow it to drain back out. Let's see how good of an engineer I am, right? See how good here. And once again, we'll add my water. Standard rate seems to be working so far. Oh no, it got topped. Oh no, oh no. My poor houses are flooded, right? Now they're in the back slump. Now let's watch the rest of this thing drain, right? Notice this river continues to drain, right? Water got pretty high, got up to here before it topped it, right? So we got that, that channel pretty high, right? But let's now watch as, as this water drains. Notice how much more is stuck back here, right? Water can't go anywhere, right? Our, our levee failed, our levee broke. Right, but now, even though this is almost done draining, we are stuck with all this water back here in the back swamp. And that was one of the big issues in New Orleans uh, with Hurricane Katrina, right? Wherever those levees broke, right, you just had water sitting, right? Because it essentially is now a back swamp, right? Let's break our levee and release this water. Cool, right? But again, so levees may be a good thing, but when they get topped, right, they do have their disadvantages. Alrighty folks, one last scenario to show you here, and this is using another mitigation technique. This one being either a retention pond or representing a dam, one of the two. Either, uh, either way, the idea is to be able to have a, a excess storage of surface runoff water, and then to allow that water to exit your, your storage system at a measured rate. So here we're using just a little, you know, plastic tube, and the diameter of this tube is what dictates how much water goes through there, right? In a dam, they actually have, you know, they can open and close to really regulate how much water is allowed in, right? So let's see how well this does. Let me put my little houses back on our floodplain here, all right? Houses back on the floodplain. Let's see how well this dam, right, works as a mitigation technique, right? Or retention pond, one of the two. So you notice it is storing surface excess surface runoff, right? Now it is slowly, measuredly releasing, right? It almost topped the dam there. As we can see, that's a, a you know important thing, right? If you top a dam or you break a dam, it's definitely a bad thing. But look at down here, right? Look at our stream. Oh, wonderful, right? In its banks, right? Still, we have that same um, 
that same head water, you know, the same amount of water, you have the same rain event coming in at the same rate, same volume, right? But look at this, you know, this is, you know, doing pretty good here, right? Again, you know, there is an issue, right? If you top or, you know, or, or the dam burst, we've seen that recently, right? Um, that can cause, of course, a bunch of water to come flooding down all of a sudden, right? Let's see if I can breach our dam here. Right. Uh, you know, we just breached the dam. <laughs> all right. So you get that point, right? But as you saw before, you know, that, that measured rate, you were able to control, store some excess surface runoff and control and release that at a reasonable volume and rate into our uh, system. Right? Alrighty folks, hope you enjoyed the flood models.